So I've been doing martial arts for 40 years. I've been doing jiu-jitsu since the very early 90s. I got my black belt in 2006. I've been around the jiu-jitsu game and the MMA game since the very beginning. I, mean, I remember UFC 1 and I remember the events that came before UFC 1. I've trained with a ton of fighters. Fighters who fought in the UFC, fighters who fought in Pride, fighters who fought in events like King of the Cage all over the planet, all over the country. So I've got a lot of experience working with fighters and seeing them as they go through the arc of their career. And one thing that's really important to know is when to quit. The worst kind of damage and the scariest damage for me isn't really dying. It's not really breaking an arm or breaking a leg. Science can probably fix that. It's brain damage. It's CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's what all the football players get. It's what all the hockey players get. It's what all the boxers get. And it's what all the MMA fighters get. It is the result of those little shots and those big shots. Obviously, getting knocked out in a big title fight is not good for your brain. But the science actually shows that, although that's bad, the, the many multiple little shots that you're getting in sparring day after day after day, pop, 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 are just as bad, if not worse. Even soccer. The soccer players who head the ball more often, you know, like you're trying to hit the ball with their head to knock it into the goal or whatever, those soccer players have more memory problems than soccer players that head the ball less often. All brain damage is dangerous. Think of it this way. If I gave you an iPhone, I don't know, an iPhone 11, pretty good iPhone. Here's an iPhone 11. By the way, this is the only smartphone you're going to have for the rest of your life. How much care would you take of your iPhone 11? If it was me, I'd have it inside one case, then inside another case, and I wouldn't let anybody else touch it, and I'd have it in this big padded duffel bag, and I'd carry it around with me, and when I didn't have it, I'd lock it in a vault so that nobody could steal it, because I wouldn't want to be without a phone. That's pretty obvious, but you're going to have to walk around with your brain for the rest of your life. So far, science has made zero progress on dissolving the plaques and the clots and the crap that generates in your brain when you take this repeated damage, these plaques that form in your brain. So maybe one day they'll have a cure, but they don't right now, and it's not on the horizon. So you've got one iPhone for the rest of your life, and it's your brain. So all fighting is dangerous. I'm not saying don't fight. But there does come a point when fighting no longer makes sense. And here, based on the, the arc of many different fighters that I've seen, is my number one indicator of when you should stop fighting. And it's when you lose the love for training. I'm going to pivot here. I got a kitten once. This little kitten was super aggressive, super cute. You'd dangle a string and it would play and bat at the string. You'd be in bed and you'd, your toe would be under the covers and be pouncing on the covers and then suddenly you'd be going through the day and all of a sudden it would skitter around the, the home and jump on here, jump on there and pounce on something. It was very, very cute. And then one day that kitten went outside and killed a great big East Van rat. It went from no, never having killed anything to attacking and killing a rat that was a significant portion of the size of its body. What had it been doing? to get ready for that super fight, that fight with a rat. It had been training. Every batting of the string was training. Every pouncing on a toe was training. All the play wrestling was training. The rapid direction changes as running around the house is training. That was training. It's training, 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 training all the time. And probably when the little kitten was dreaming, it was dreaming with its genetic pre-programming of how to more effectively kill rat-sized objects. So that kitten was obsessed with training. Many young fighters are obsessed with training and if, if their body starts not being able to support that level of training, then they're thinking about it all the time. They're just totally destroyed after their third jiu-jitsu session and second conditioning session of the day. They're gonna go home and they're gonna watch a video of MMA fights. They're gonna go watch boxing matches and watch how that guy slips and then counter jabs right in the face. And they're gonna watch it frame by frame by frame by frame by frame. And they're just gonna be obsessed with training and getting better. But many fighters, after they've been at it a long time, they start getting complacent. They're like, man, I gotta fight in six weeks. I haven't trained, I've been training like once a week. I guess I, I guess I better start doing some road work. And then they go for a jog. Now, if that's their attitude towards training, 
How much more likely are they to take really heavy damage in the ring? I'm not passing any judgment on them. Your passions change over time. The thing that you focus on changes over time. We've all gone from hobby to hobby to hobby, or relationship to relationship to relationship, or wife to wife to wife. You can't be faulted for changing your focus. But if you change your focus, and you're still dabbling in the last thing that you were doing, that's when you're most likely to get seriously hurt. That's when the really big knockouts happen. There are other indicators as well. If you start getting hit more in training, if you start having a losing record in the ring, it's probably time to pack it in. It takes time to manifest. Some of the most terrifying videos are the before and after videos of boxers. Early in their career, they're articulate, they're clever, they're witty. 20 years in, they're, they're mumbling. Being punch drunk is a real thing and it doesn't get better. If you're not super sharp and super motivated to train all the time and be on point in your conditioning and do everything you can to be the best version of a fighter, you probably shouldn't be fighting. The risks are just too high. This is not something that's as dangerous in jiu-jitsu competition. You go, you enter a jiu-jitsu competition, you haven't been training, uh, you haven't been doing your conditioning. Yes, you could conceivably have your arm broken. You could conceivably get slammed on the mat in a bad takedown. Bad things can happen, but the odds of it being that repetitive brain trauma are much, much, much less. So yes, if, if you don't know if you want to compete and you, you go out and do a jiu-jitsu competition or submission grappling competition, there are risks, but they're not nearly as serious as for fighting. When it comes to fighting, when it comes to boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA, if you're my listener, if you're watching this, I implore you, only do it if you're really serious about it. And when you lose the love for the training, man, it's time to pack it in or at least take a long vacation. It's time to take a long vacation because every time you step in the ring and you're not 100% ready and you don't have months and months and months of super focused training to back you up, the odds of having a very poor outcome go up. It's all an odds game and we're trying to keep the odds forever in your favor.